Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy Tuesday. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good day. We'll talk about um, kind of the levels from yesterday and all that good stuff that we talked about on the video. Hopefully uh, you guys took advantage of those levels. But uh, just a quick announcement. Uh, usually there's no video on Thursday nights. Uh, tomorrow there'll actually be no video. And instead I'll record a video on Thursday to kind of switch nights. So just a quick announcement, nothing really uh, crazy. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, spending a few minutes uh, with us. Uh, come aboard, right? If you could be so uh, nice, uh, just click a like, click a share, uh, comment, whatever it is, interact, whatever you need. Uh, we are here to kind of tackle the markets together uh, via unbiased technical analysis. So let's talk about it, right? A couple of things we knew for the last uh, three days, right? Uh, Friday, we gapped up. We got rejected at uh, 363, right? Yesterday, we gapped up again, got rejected a little bit below 363. So we knew if you watched last night's video, we knew that 363 was going to be an important number, not to kind of get us out of this downtrend, because again, we need to still get above the 50-day moving average but just out of this little baby channel to have a kind of a tradable bounce, right? However, we also knew the downside as well, right? And we watched it and we've been talking about this level now for back-to-back -back days because the market has been trying to get out of this channel here. We knew 363 to the upside and we also knew 357. If you go back to the last two videos, that's all we talked about, 363 to the upside, 357 to the downside. And the point is we're going to be prepared on both sides of the market. We don't know where it's in the market's going to go, right? We could, we're not guessers. We're not professional uh, psychics. All we're trying to do is take the data from both sides, wait to see which side confirms, and trade accordingly, right? Trade accordingly with a lot of aggression, with a lot of conviction, and a lot of clarity. And that's the whole point of trading. Stop being right, okay? We were wrong every single day. The point of trading is being prepared that both sides of the market you are prepared for there are no surprises. There are no levels that randomly just jump in front of your face. You are prepared because, damn it, that's what we depend, right? We, 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 we make sure as professional traders, we put ourselves in a position that we're, uh, we are the hunter, right? We're not the prey, and both sides of the market are covered. So we knew going into today uh, that both of those channels are going to be super duper important. The question was what was going to happen, right? This morning, uh, we, the futures started getting heavier, not really a surprise, but the key was because everything was kind of in the middle of the channels going into today's trading day, can the market get enough weakness, right? Because again, we started pulling through, uh, we were roughly around 358 or so on the NASDAQ, on the Qs, uh, pre-market. So we wanted to see, can the market get below that uh, 357 uh, that we talked about? Obviously it did. We'll, again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. I know a lot of people did very, very well today. Congratulations, guys. I'm actually still holding uh, a 10% runner on the queues uh, overnight. Uh, but the point was we started seeing, you know, a lot of weakness, right? Even names uh, like NVIDIA, that was a bright shining star uh, yesterday. Stock actually went green on the day uh, at one point. Didn't take out the previous day's range, and that was kind of the telltale sign. Uh, you start started starting seeing jolts. Uh, job numbers come out uh, at 10 o'clock. That wasn't really a good thing for the market as well. So the most important part is we got hit today, right? We got hit today uh, pretty aggressively. When I mean we, I mean the market because I'll show you the pivots in a second. Uh, pretty damn good, right? Pretty damn good. So the Dow Jones goes down uh, the, goes down 1.2%, almost 1.3% of the day or 430 points. And what does that do? It erases. Think about where we are, guys. We are in October it erases the 2023 gains for the year. It's a pretty big message, right? It's a pretty big message. Uh, S&P 500 down about 1.4%. NASDAQ got hit pretty aggressively today. As you can imagine, uh, any growth story came out, got absolutely killed. NASDAQ at one point was uh, down way over 2%. Uh, it closed down 1.87%. And all these groups 
that we've been talking about for days and days and days, and now it feels like weeks and weeks and weeks, right? The retailers of the world, the consumer cyclicals of the world, the soft drink makers of the world, like the soft drink makers of the world, anything, right? Anything, you know, about, you know, uh, Colgate, Palm Oil, but anything, anything to do with consumer continues to get hit. And that's a very, very big deal. It's not the first time we're talking about it. We're talking about literally now every video, video because it shows the rotation out of out, uh, money outflow out of all these groups. And that's why they just continuously drifting, drifting, drifting. But the point is here in the bigger picture is what happens to techs and the tech. And now that we've closed below the five day moving average, and that's all we were talking about yesterday. Now, if you again, if you believe in the theory of stocks trade from support to support and supply to supply, well, here's our next support, right? Here's our next support here at 351. Now, keep this in mind. The market could kill today, okay? The market doesn't have to die tomorrow. It'd be nice because, uh, again, I still have a whole bunch of uh, things on, but it doesn't have to, right? It absolutely doesn't have to. We could definitely have, well, and definitely have, we could possibly have uh, a kind of an inside day tomorrow, maybe a little relief rally, whatever the case may be. But having said that, the longer we now stay below 357 below the five-day moving average, that means the bears are building a new ceiling, right? They're building a new supply area that the bulls are going to need to reclaim. Again, bad enough, we lost the 50. Bad enough, we lost 100, 150. Now we're below the five. And again, the five, as, as I said in the previous two videos, that's the shortest term indicator we have. And again, if the bulls start really losing today's channels, uh, we could test back to the September 27th lows and ultimately have a soft landing here somewhere around the 349, uh, 349, 349 and a half uh, area there on the QQQs. Uh, if you look at uh, the SPX, uh, we talked about a couple of days ago, the importance of it losing the 4,300 area, right? That also gave back the 150 day moving average. And again, it went down to 4,210. Uh, it looks like a soft landing here, roughly around the 4,201 uh, 4182 level if the market continues uh, to pull. Uh, you look at the IWM again. This is this balloon has been popped a long time ago, right? This this uh, you know this is really speculates uh, shows speculation money. Speculation money's been out the window for a very very long time here. Uh, ever since like you know ever since the move uh, losing the first 50 day moving average in uh, August. So we are really really well not really but IWM is really really hit here as well. And just aforementioned. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average goes red for the year. So again, not a pretty picture, uh, not a pretty picture at all. But again, again, this is what we always talk about for new traders. The faster you learn and really appreciate both sides of the market, the faster you will become a professional trader. Guys, it's so easy to have a rabid bull market that everything goes up every single day. It doesn't take a lot of skill set. It really doesn't. It doesn't take a lot of skill set. doesn't take, take a lot of uh, you know, a lot of strategy. You know, you buy a stock that's breaking out, it'll probably be higher two weeks from now. That's what it is. When you have a market that has inflation issues, technical damage, um, jobs, you know, unclarity, future unclarity, you have an election coming up in 2024, right? You got to learn how to trade both sides of the market. And, and again, I, I don't understand the whole theory of, well, I don't short stocks. Well, why? Why don't you short stocks? Right, it's the same thing as buying stock. You're just betting it's going to go lower. I get it. If you if you if you've never shorted a stock and it's a new thing to you, I get it. It's scary. But isn't everything you do for the first time scary? Right? Isn't getting behind a wheel of a car at 16 years old, 17 years old scary? Isn't it firm the first time you? Right? Wasn't a little scary? I want to try to keep it PG. That's why I didn't say the word. But more more important is life is all about challenges. Right? Life is all about challenges. Life is all about adversity and getting over fears and doing things that are outside of your comfort zone. But the point is, like I've been saying this for years, God gave you two hands, right? Gave you two eyes, two ears, two feet. You got to trade both sides of the market. I uh, leg into it one share at a time, three shares at a time, 50 shares at a time, 200 shares at a time, whatever the case may be. But if you, if you're, again, you have to ask yourself a question go, go in front of the mirror and ask yourself a question. Do I want to be a professional trader or do I want to be a person who buys stocks in the bull market? It's okay if that is, uh, is the latter. But again, you can't just sit there week after week, day after day, talking about cash as a position. It's not, right? It's an excuse. And, and again, if the market continues to go lower and lower and lower, I mean, how long can you afford to sit, you know, sit with quote unquote cash as a position? Um, you know, what happens if we, if this turns back into 2022 and we're down, 
you know, 35, 38% for, for the year, whatever the hell it was for the NASDAQ 100. You, again, you have to, whatever game you play, you have to know the rules. If you play chess, you have to understand that the pawns are a little bit different than the bishop, a little bit of the knights. If you play basketball, you, you have to know the difference between a foul shot and a three-pointer. There's rules to this game, right? And unless you know and master, you know, as best of your ability, all the rules of the game, you are always going to be behind the eight ball. And unfortunately, that is reality. I had to make this up. It's just the reality for years and years and years. When I used to trade prop and I used to trade at Carl and Equities, I saw hundreds and hundreds of traders go in the revolving door, go out the revolving door. Because again, they're so set in their ways and they want the market. They, they want the market that best fits their personality, their life style, uh, their experience level. Unfortunately, life's not fair. Like I said, trading is not fair. The market's going to do what it has to do, not what it wants to do. And you have to be really, uh, really, um, you know, really mature to really understand that. So let's talk about the pivots, right? Let's talk about the pivots today. So we started the day uh, in the middle of the ranges. And again, three, if you've been watching these videos, guys, and this is, this is always why we talk about, uh, I, I always try to give you guys the prices on the QQQs. Because again, that's my little, little bit of a thank you for tuning in. Uh, we knew yesterday 363 was uh, the big number to the upside in the Qs. 357 is the five day. If it builds below, we can flush. Yes, we flush five, a 2% move on the QQQs. Just to give you an idea how aggressive this was on the five minute view, here was 57. You see it? Here was 57. Look at this sell off. Just an absolute amazing sell off. Went down to uh, 53 and change. Like I said, we could have an inside day tomorrow, very possible, but. Uh, the longer we sit now below the five-day moving average, the higher probability we get back to uh, the bottom of the range of September uh, September lows. Uh, you know, I put some pivots to the upside, right, just in case we rally. We obviously didn't. So Amazon is irrelevant. Microsoft is irrelevant. Google is irrelevant. And here are some uh, short bases here. Uh, Airbnb, 132.17. If it builds below, can flush. Got downgraded this morning. Here is uh, Airbnb, right? Here's Airbnb. Here's the five-minute view of Airbnb, just to get an idea. So it got, it got uh, downgraded. It, once it lost that 32 level stock, I just got absolutely hosed. Uh, went down all the way down to 126 and change. Uh, big move there as well. Tesla didn't confirm up. Tesla didn't confirm down, like a lot of names. Uh, Carvana, uh, 38.25 held twice in the last three days. If it builds below, can flush. Here was Carvana, right? So it took out the 38 and a quarter. It went all the way down to 36 and change. Nice move there. Uh, Tesla, da, da, da. yeah, Tesla, it, it, it went lower, right? Tesla took out 46, went to 44, but it was the same candle. So I, I didn't take the short there. Um, CLVT. So I started a position in CLVT yesterday. You guys know, I love these, uh, earnings low plays. So I started it yesterday, right? I started it yesterday on this engulfing candle here. So I started yesterday at 670. Today, it took out the 640 level and closed the 620. This thing looks uh, lower here. So here is the here. The 668, if it builds below, can flush to test 641. And, and again, here is their notes. Any close below 641 starts the next leg down. Just a gorgeous move. Close at the lows of the day at 620. This thing looks uh, lower. Cues, uh, we were, yeah. So basically what happened was, so uh, everyone get down to 25% to the 3550s. 3470s is our target for the day. It hit the 3470 target, then kind of a, we, we, we kind of switched up the game plan a little bit here. I go change your plans, get down to 10% in the 3470s. Who knows, maybe we go lower for another few points. They actually went down for another couple of points and we're still holding uh, the 10% move. Um, I've been sitting in a lot of names, man, for the last uh, several weeks. Uh, you know, again, Cargill, um, the Cargill is finally starting to crack here. So I've, I've been short this thing from 1750 for, for a month. Uh, it finally cracked today. It's finally covered some below. Uh, 17. If this thing could just lose the 1690s, I still think we, there's a shot we get to 1624. Uh, MGNI, man, this is another one I've been I've been short for several weeks. I'm just waiting for this damn thing to crack. Uh, I'm short at 740. It's at 730. Just doesn't want to crack. Maybe this damn thing finally cracks in the next couple of days. Uh, gets down to seven. Um, let's see. Goodyear tire. Uh, Goodyear tire finally cracked here. I've been sitting this thing now for about a week. I uh, went back to 12. This thing just needs to lose this 1190s uh, to get hit here. Uh, and um, the only one that's not working right now uh, is Donut. Uh, donut, uh, Dunkin', uh, not Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme Donuts. I'm, I'm down about, you know, I'm down about 12, 13 cents in it. But uh, they came out with some news. They might consider spinning off one of their divisions. But I'm just waiting for that crack here. It just keeps on getting rejected here in the 10-day moving average. 
maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. But our point is I'll, I'll sit in this thing until it starts reclaiming the 10-day uh, moving average on the close. So that's it, guys. That's it. Uh, very aggressive day. Uh, I'm very, very happy that a lot of you guys especially watched the broadcast uh, uh, were able to capitalize, especially on the cues. Uh, if you want to learn uh, more about pivots and the PS60 theory, again, um, we are live six, uh, five days a week. I am literally speaking for six hours a day. It's nearly 25 years of live market commentary. There's no voodoo. There's no editing. It's live pivots. That's all it is. If you are curious about pivots, guys, uh, again, run, you know, take a, take a shot, 30 days, kick the tires, see if it's a good fit for you. Guys, God bless everybody. Again, just a reminder, tomorrow there is no video, so instead there'll be one on Thursday. Stay blessed, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow.